If you go onto an online retailer like Amazon, who are a go-to for a lot of people when it comes to shopping for PC parts, and we take a look at their top sellers in the graphics card category, do you notice what's going on here? Well, if it wasn't obvious to you, notice how 5 out of the top 10 are from the same tier, signifying that the vast majority of gamers are residing at this performance level. And these were cards which the community as well as hardware reviewers didn't give glowing reviews to. Despite all the outcry about overpriced GPUs and stagnation, people are still buying buying them in droves. It's a shift that not only affects gamers today, but could also define what we come to expect or worse, tolerate in the future GPU market. In this video, we're going to be unpacking why this tier of GPUs are still so popular and what this means for GPU pricing going forward. Let's get into it. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I was originally going to be making a video discussing which graphics cards you should be buying in late 2024 or what kind of good deals are ongoing. Something to give you guys an overview of the current GPU market. With the holiday season approaching us with important dates like Black Friday around the quarter and Christmas following afterwards, I thought it would have been a nice update video. However, as I started to browse through the usual go-to retailer sites, I noticed something peculiar from the graphics card category section. More specifically, what types of GPUs were holding the spots in their top 10 list of best sellers? On Amazon, you'll see that the number one spot is held by the RTX 3060, an entry-level GPU released back in early 2021. Following that, at number two, we have an RTX 4070 Super, which is a mid-range card. Then we have another RTX 3060, a 7600 XT, a 4060, 6750 XT, another 4060, a 3050, and then a couple of 4070 Ti Supers. I checked Newegg and their top seller category seems similar with mostly 60 class level cards however they did appear to have more expensive models in their top 10 list. I'm going to be attributing that to buyers on Newegg who are generally more hardware enthusiasts and are willing to spend more on hardware hence we see that average cost of a GPU in their best sellers category is higher. Then when we take a look at something like the Steam Hardware Survey and their breakdown of graphics card usage from the data collected in October 2024 what's been happening in the retail market is being being reflected here. We see that the RTX 3060 is holding the number one spot. Following that and ignoring laptop parts because we're focused on discrete graphics, we see that the RTX 4060 is next. Now the 3060 and 4060 are relatively close in performance, where on average the 4060 is about 8-10% to faster. You know, depends on the game. But the former usually retails for about $280 and the 4060 goes for around $300, which is kind of sad to see considering these GPUs are over two years old, and at this point, they should be selling for well below MSRP, at least $100 below MSRP. But if the market demands are still high and they're still selling for those price points, then there just simply won't be a price cut. Now, what we're seeing here might just be surface level data to some, but to me, it's pretty telling of a bigger trend in the GPU market. The 60 class cards, like the RTX 3060 and 4060, are consistently holding spots at the top of the charts, even though they weren't exactly showered with praise at launch. And why is that? Well, the answer lies in a few factors. Affordability, lack of better options, and the simple fact that for a lot of gamers, these cards are, well, they're good enough. Let's talk about the performance these cards offer for a second. If we take a look back a few generations, the 60 class card was always kind of a sweet spot. The GTX 1060 and the GTX 1660 Ti, for example, were cards that many gamers could buy and get solid 1080p performance. You weren't maxing out ultra settings in every AAA game, but for the price, you got respectable frame rates in most titles. Fast forward to today, and the RTX 3060 is still giving decent value for 1080p gamers, although it's not mind-blowing like its predecessors. Furthermore, the RTX 4060 can dip its toes into 1440p territory, depending on the title, and albeit with some compromises on settings. Features like frame generation and DLSS upscaling have certainly facilitated in the lack of hardware, which we'll discuss a bit more later on. So for a lot of people, these cards hit a performance point where they just were good enough for what they need, without feeling overkill. And from my experience, when I was working at a parts retailer, helping people make custom builds, people who would buy these kinds of cards, I'd ask them what kind of games they're playing, and a lot of these folks, not all of them, but most were generally playing top Twitch titles like CSGO, League of Legends, Overwatch, GTA, Fortnite, and more. Those types of games which generally aren't very demanding titles, and 
a 3060 or 4060 would have no problem running at very good frame rates, and they weren't necessarily interested in playing the latest new titles or trying to play everything with max settings on ray tracing. That's not to say that they can't play new games. I mean, you can find plenty of YouTube videos of people benchmarking these graphics cards in modern titles like Space Marine 2, Black Myth Wukong, Black Ops 6, and more, and getting a playable experience. You just have to be cautious of settings and temper your expectations. I don't own a 3060 or 4060, but I do have an RTX 2080, which performs about the same, and I'll be making a revisitation video of this card sometime in the future, but I was playing around with it again not too long ago for my mini PC docking vid review video and found it to be quite capable in new games. Along with that, you guys do have to remember that for the vast majority of these types of gamers, and this is something else that the Steam charts will verify, is that a lot of people are buying 1080p monitors, or they're still gaming at 1080p displays. But here's the catch, the price of these 60 class cards has crept up over the years. The GTX 1060 that launched at $249, the RTX 2060 that came out at $349, then the RTX 3060 launched at $329, and then that came with the 4060 afterwards and at $299. Nvidia did lower the price slightly for the 4060, probably due to the backlash they would have received, and even though the price was lower, there was performance performance stagnation, or in some cases, even regression, plus you downgraded from 12 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So it really overshadows any value you would have gotten from a price point. Despite all of that, people are still buying them in droves. I think it comes down to three things, options, competition, and expectations. When the 3060 and 4060 launched, there was a wave of criticism about the price. People just weren't happy that what used to be a budget-friendly card was now costing what mid-range GPUs used to. But as time has gone on, it seems like people have kind of settled into this new pricing bracket. The other thing is the lack of competition. When Nvidia was on the incline for pricing, people did look towards AMD for a cost-effective solution. Forget about all the gimmicks, forget about upscaling and frame gen, forget about ray tracing. Just give me a good raster card at a cost-effective price point, and I'm gonna buy that a mindset which would resonate with a lot of budget gamers. That didn't play out. AMD also followed Nvidia's lead, and their alternative was almost the same price, minus like $20, hardly a good jump from the previous generation, so in that case, people are just going to be buying Nvidia anyways. When I look at the top sellers list of these retailers like Amazon, Memory Express, and Newegg, and see it translating over to the Steam hardware surveys, it's like a snapshot of the real market, showing us that despite all of the complaints, the 60 class cards have solidified themselves as the go-to option. The RTX 3060 sits at the top and the 4060 isn't far behind. What this tells me is that while we may all want the high-end GPU experience, most gamers definitely aren't buying flagship cards, regardless of if that's where most of the attention is in the tech tuber space or with reviewers. They're buying the ones that offer the best value within reach, and the 60 class cards are still accessible, albeit at a higher price than they used to be. At the end of the day, the popularity of the 3060 and 4060 likely comes down to the fact that they're still the most affordable entry point options into the world of modern graphics. Even though they're pricier than what, you know, 60 class used to be, they're still within reach of most gamers compared to even more expensive cards or what the mid-range used to go for. Add in factors like DLSS on Nvidia side, which does give these cards a bit more longevity by letting them stretch their legs in demanding games, and it's easy to see why they've become the go-to choices. What's concerning about this incline in pricing is how it essentially shapes the landscape of the future GPU market. Nvidia has effectively redefined what quote-unquote entry-level and what mid-range means in the terms of pricing. Where entry-level used to mean sub $200, now we're looking at $300 to $400. Mid-range, which used to hover around that $300 to $400, is now closer to $600. And while that's frustrating, the fact that these cards are still topping the best sellers list means Nvidia and other companies see no reason to roll back prices. The problem with normalizing higher pricing is that it does restrict choices for the average gamer. When the price of entry-level cards go up, it means fewer people are able to afford the upgrade options. And when mid-range cards start costing as much as high-end cards from just a few years ago, it forces gamers into a tough decision. Compromise on performance, or save up even more to get the experience they really want. If this trend does continue, we could be looking at a future where gaming on a budget just is not viable for a lot of people. You might end up needing to spend $600 to just get what was once considered entry-level performance. 
And as NVIDIA or AMD see that people are willing to pay these prices, they have no incentive to lower them. It's kind of a vicious cycle where as consumers, you just lose out. Furthermore, these manufacturers will continue to test what the ceiling or limit is for the average consumer. Over these past couple of years, we've had a lot of discussions surrounding pricing and I'd often hear the whole vote what your wallet's saying. And if we don't buy them, then they won't be able to sell them at higher prices, hence they won't be normalized and then prices will be coming back down to earth. If this truly was happening though, they would have rejected them and instead we'd be seeing sub $200 RX 6500s at the top of the list. However, as you guys all saw from the retailer top sellers, the market clearly has accepted the new prices and that's why there haven't been any price drops. Why bother when they're still making money? I don't know what the limit is though, but if the entry level next gen is established at $500 and if the cards sell at that price, then that is what the new floor will be. Will people eventually drop off? It's very much possible, and I mean, that seems to be a theme in a lot of industries we're seeing not just in tech, from automotive to housing, people are just foregoing the thought of ownership and are sticking with these monthly rental plans. And I think there's a chance that this could be spilling over into the PC gaming and hardware market. You can't afford a graphics card? No worries, we've got these affordable monthly subscription plans. Don't worry about a large lump sum of money. Starting at just $8.99, you can experience 60 class performance. No hardware needed, just make sure your internet is fast and you don't have a cap on your bandwidth. Because it's 2030, you don't own anything, and you'll be happy. There's also an impact on the used market. A few years ago, when a new generation of GPUs came out, you'd see hefty price drops on the previous generation, which made for some excellent deals on the second-hand market. But now, with each generation offering smaller performance gains and higher MSRPs, used GPUs are holding their value longer. For a while before the vast majority of consumers caught on to the used market, I was telling folks, ignore all these new cards, you can go on eBay at the time and find 3080s used going for like $400, sometimes even lower than that if you got lucky, or you could buy like an RTX 3070 for like $250. Unfortunately, that is not the case anymore. I was looking at 3070s just recently and they go for like $350, which sucks. But when you have a new 3060 retailing for $280, then you will never see prices move anymore. This brings us back to the idea of consumer acceptance. When people continue to buy these cards at higher prices, it reinforces the message that we're willing to accept these changes. The more we buy, the more NVIDIA and AMD see these pricing strategies as successful. It's a bit of a catch-22 because for many gamers, waiting indefinitely for a price drop just isn't an option. They need to upgrade now. But every purchase sends a signal to the market, and right now, that signal is saying, yes, we will pay these high prices. So to wrap things up, the popularity of the RTX 3060 and 4060 speaks to the market where good enough has become the standard. These cards aren't groundbreaking, but they get the job done for most gamers, and at a price point that, while frustratingly high, is still manageable for many. This normalization of higher prices has essentially reshaped the GPU landscape, and it's going to take something big, whether that's a bold move from AMD or Intel or a dramatic shift in consumer behavior to disrupt it. For now, that's going to be doing it for this one, and we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.